us continue with our call to worship. A love that never ceases. The creativity that designed the universe. A hope that cannot be quenched. A pursuit of reconciliation no matter the cost. These are the things that are of God. And let us worship God. Please rise if you are able for this morning's opening hymn on the screen or page 334. Pontius Pilate was crucified, dead, and buried. 
He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joshua. Did you ever hear of Joshua? 
Some of you heard of them. Everybody heard of them. Eh, maybe not. And anyway, um, he could have been like everybody else and believed what he saw. Because a lot of people did that. But he put his faith in God in action because he put his faith in God. And he saw what the Israelite people could be, not what they were. So you need to remember that you can be different in God. That he makes you special and unique. And you can do great things. Can you remember that? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would give us the faith we need to become the grown-ups that we need to be. In your name, amen. Thanks for coming up. That's right. Heavenly Father, as we worship you today, what, what an honor it is just to be here. To be worshiping you and praising you as a body of believers. Worshiping, praising you for what you do in our lives, what you have done and what you continue to do. We praise you. We're so grateful for the love that we don't even understand, that we can't comprehend. It's not that great. So as we come to you, knowing that we are your children and that you love us, we also know you want what is best for us, that you watch over us and guide us and lead us through this life. And so you are so worthy of our praise. You're worthy because you give us hope for the future. You're worthy because you created us. We are your masterpiece. And as we worship you, Father, we know that we can't totally shut the outside world out, the difficulties and the struggles. And so we think of those that have needs. We think of Tricia, who lost her grandfather, Steve and Linda, who lost her daughter. Bring them comfort this day, comfort that only you can give them. Also, we pray for healing for Sherry, who's in the hospital. We pray that you continue to lift Jen up. Keep her going each and every day. And, and I'm so grateful that she knows you and relies on you. And, and that that's a good thing, and we're grateful for that. We also think of Patty and Rob, as Rob has Parkinson's disease. And so we, we pray that you will be with them as they adjust to this lifestyle because it is a change in lifestyle. So, so we'll just be with them and may they sense your presence. We also pray for continued healing for Sandy. We're grateful that Izzy and, and Ruth are, are coming along as well. We thank you for that. We lift Nancy to you today. We miss her and we hope that she's with us next week. We also ask for traveling mercies for Michelle and Jeremy and, and Michael and Lily. Please watch over them and bring them home soon. We also pray that when Heather gets her cast on, that um, the healing process continues and soon she'll be out of that cast and she'll be feeling better. We pray for that. We also thank you for the joy of grandchildren this day. Those little munchkins that put smiles on our faces. Also, for the pets that we have, we, we just thank you and, and, and praise you for the joy and the comfort that they bring us. And Father, we would not be here today if your son had not given his life that we might have life. Sometimes we take that so lightly, we forget the great sacrifice made, the suffering that he endured so as we remember all the things that he did for us, we remember his words that he said to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, our hymn of preparation.
situation in the garden. If you are able, please stand. Passover, that very day, 
they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread and roasted grain. The manna stopped the day after they ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites, but that year they ate the produce of Canaan. This is God's holy word. So that he sees his children 
and he protects us and cares for us. We're going to have battles in this life, aren't we? Battles like Parkinson's disease. Battles like broken relationships. Maybe the battle is financial. Maybe you'll have disobedient children. Battles that break our hearts. Maybe we'll have a battle such as persecution. We'll have battles in our life, and God wants us to know that no matter what the battles are that lie ahead, that the Holy Spirit will sustain you. Not only that, the Holy Spirit will renew you. It will empower you. It will identify who you are, that you are a child of God. And when you become part of the family of Christ, you're marked with that new covenant, the Holy Spirit. And here it is, folks. Is it work in our lives today? Have you ever felt that the Spirit empower you to do something you didn't want to do or something that you had to do? The Spirit empowers us to do God's will and God's work in our lives. Let's look at verse 9. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. So this place has been called Gilgal till this day. The second way that God restores his people is this. God cleanses our past. There we go. Looking back on that past that we don't want to remember. Finally, their escape was complete. They had entered the promised land, and their enemies would be defeated. God remembered the sins of his people. He remembered their disobedience, but God dealt with those sins, didn't he? And those people wandered in the desert for 40 years. You see, if we don't deal with our sins, God will deal with our sins. You don't want to wander around the desert for 40 years. You don't want that to happen. But now God is saying to those people, as, to, uh, as well to us, that he will cleanse their past. He will cleanse our past. And as we look at the past, we see what happens when we disobey God. You know, God's way is not always the easy way, but it's always the better way. Always the better way. God can bring, can bring healing to our past. The past does not have to haunt us. You can let go of it. God's freeing you from that. And the Holy Spirit will empower you to rise above your past sins. Sometimes we like to call them mistakes, but they're not mistakes. They're outright sins. You're released from those. The Spirit will help you overcome those. Because God not only forgives our sin, he restores us and he cleanses us. The world, now it might not forget your sins, but God will. The world might say that you are worthless, but God has marked you. You're his children and you're marked with purpose. The world might reject you because of the past, but God says you have value. We can live by sight, or we can live by faith. God calls us to be people of faith. He calls us to be people of faith. Now, Tony Campolo told this story of a young Jewish boy. It was during World War II, and this little boy lived in a town where the Nazi soldiers came and rounded up all the Jews gathered up all of them, and then took them and made them dig their own graves. And then stood them in front of those graves and mowed them down and shot them down. Now as a little boy stood there with his parents, and the gun fire rang out, his parents were hit and they fell in the grave. Now the little boy was not hit, but he was all splattered with blood and he fell in the grave 
on top of his parents. And he laid there while still pretending that he was dead. And so the Nazi soldiers come over and they filled in the grave. But luckily they didn't fill it in so much that the little boy couldn't breathe. They just, it was a shallow grave and they just put a little bit of dirt over top of the bodies. And the little boy laid there until it was dark. And when it was dark, he crawled out of that grave and he went from house to house saying, can you help me? Can you help me? But the people were afraid. They knew what would happen if they sheltered this Jewish boy. So they slammed the door and said, go away. So finally he went to this door and he said to them, he's, when the door was open, he said, I am the Jesus you claim to love. And the lady looked up the street, looked around, and she pulled the boy in and shut the door, cleaned him up and fed him. And the entire family took care of him and sheltered him. Let's look at verses 11 and 12. The day after the Passover, that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread and roasted grain. The manna stopped the day after they ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites, but that year they ate the produce from Canaan. Third way, third way God restores his people. God will give you a new start, a new beginning. It's a do-over. It's a mulligan if you golf. I need lots of those. God will give you a new start. Just as he did that little boy that it seemed so dire and so hopeless, he got that new start. Because when Faith looked at him, she couldn't do otherwise but bring him in. Everybody else saw by sight and saw a Jewish boy. But when Faith looked at him, saw this little boy that God had created. God will give you a new start. You see, for those people, and for us as well, the days of wandering are gone. God will give you a new start. You now have a new home. Now we begin to sow seeds, seeds of righteousness. Now we have a new life. The old life is gone, and the new life has begun. Now we are God's chosen people. We have a new identity. Now he will show us the new start he has for us. For us, not just for them, but for us as well. Our new life has begun. Why did the manna stop? Because they were in the promised land. They had all the food they wanted there. God no longer had to drop manna from the sky because he was providing a wonderful garden for them to live in, to eat. And now we're given meaning to our lives. Not only meaning, now we have purpose. As children of God, we have purpose. And not only that, we have hope because of what Jesus the Christ did for each of us. Jesus did it for me. Now we have hope, hope of the future and freedom from the past. Now we have a new start. I want you to know today that God mends broken lives. God heals broken relationships. God can repair what is broken in your life. Your past is forgotten. Your sins are forgiven. You have the opportunity, folks, to begin anew. God will mark you with the Holy Spirit. God will cleanse your past. God will give you a new start. God will restore his people. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that we don't have to be who we were. That you don't look at us with sight. Say, I see a sinner. No, now with faith, we're sinners saved by 
mighty grace, your grace. And we're grateful that we've overcome past. Sometimes we like to bring up or others like to bring up. But now we're children of God. We have a new mark, a new label. Father, we're grateful this day for the great love you've shown us. We're grateful this day that we can overcome because Jesus overcame. We don't have to wander around and be hopeless anymore. We have our eyes set on you and on the glorious future and on the promised land that you have promised us, heaven for all eternity. We praise you this day for all that you've done in our lives and all you're about to do. In your holy name, amen. Our closing hymn this day is, I'll go where you want me to go. You are able, please stand.